Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Northern Nevada. We here at UUFNN are growing in community and individually with faith that by being and working together, we can bring about justice and a compassionate collective. We seek, we seek the gifts of the spirit, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Of course, it's a joy to see you all here present in the great room and those of you who are in Zoom. We welcome all to be part of us despite uh, differences in racial identity, ethnic background, age, economic circumstances, sexual orientation, or gender identity. U, U, F, and N is about compassion and support, not judgment. We couldn't do this before, but we can now uh, just take a little bit of time to greet one another with a fist bump, with an elbow bump, with a hug, with a smile and a few kind words. So would you please stand as you are able and uh, greet each other. Go back there. Uh -uh. I don't know how you can write very I'm Bob Alto with the pronouns he, him, his. It is my pleasure to serve as your worship associate for this morning's service. If this is your first time with us, welcome. If you are online, feel free to contact the office or our website for more information. You can also click on the chat box link to fill out the newcomer form and sign up for our newsletter. If you are here in person, see the greeters or anyone else, and we'll help you uh, in that process. For those in on Zoom, please note you can update your name on screen. You will remain muted during the service, but can use the chat box for comments, especially during the prayer and meditation sessions. As a courtesy, please refrain from posting announcements while folks are presenting. Following the service, stay on for a virtual coffee hour to chat face-to-face -face. if you are here in person, you can congregate outdoors for coffee and conversation, but not today because it's so cold. So stay inside and the heater is on, okay? Regrettably, uh, COVID lingers and why we have lifted all restrictions, please honor those who choose to mask and observe social distancing. It's not over. And if you've been listening to the news, more is coming, flu season, et cetera. I'd like to uh, just share the essence of UUFNN. Community means strength that joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done. Arms to hold us when we falter, a circle of healing, a circle of friends, some place where we can be free. Welcome.
Welcome all. Today's service invites all of us to partake in the reconciliation that comes from atonement. As Rumi said, come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving. It doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you have broken your vow a thousand times, come yet again. Come, come. <laughs> See, if you're alive, anything can happen. <laughs> if you're on Zoom, would you please gather your chalice and light your chalice as we do here? Gaia Brown will light the chalice for us. As I repeat the words of the Thoughts of Toward Repair of Relationship by Joanna Lupkin. We light this chalice in honor of Yom Kippur, the Jewish Day of Atonement. May its flame call us to search our souls, sifting through the past year to see where we have missed the mark. May its light guide us toward the courageous and open-hearted apology, toward repair of relationships in our lives. May its heat warm our hearts to offer forgiveness to those who have wronged us, allowing us to release the chains of grudge and blame that have bound us to them. And may its strength help us to take the actions that are within our power to make this next year more just, more loving, and more peaceful for our communities and for all of humanity. And let us say, amen.
this is the time in our program where we have the opportunity to share our bounty with each other. It is through your generosity and dedication that we here at UUFNN are self-sufficient by each of us stepping forward and offering what we can, we provide support for all that we do for each other and the wider community. Please share your bounty, what you can today, by texting 73256, typing UUFNN in the message box and hit send. Of course, you can also mail a check to the office at 780 Del Monte Lane, Reno, 89511. Or if you really want to simplify the process, you can sign up for automatic giving. So contact Carol in the office for authorization. As is our want, we also share the plate with a nonprofit in our community. The October Share Replate recipient is our center, and it is focused on the LGBTQ community. They provide programming and resources designed for youth, seniors, and families. Some of them include Transgender Youth Support Group, Transparenting and Queer Sex Education, there are recovery, support, connections, other community health services. So let the offering begin. And thank you for taking care of our beloved community. As David comes forward, please join with me as we uh, bless these offerings to the work of this fellowship, which is helping more people grow in love, faith, justice, and joy. We dedicate ourselves and these are offerings. I'm so sorry to inform you I'm on strike today. So if you've come for redemption, not happening. If you've come for reconciliation, it ain't here. If you've come for a spiritually informed message, you might as well leave now. Already took the offering. Now I see why you people do it that way. Mighty smart Unitarians. I'm on strike from making peace, nonviolent communication, and spiritualizing. I'm going to tell you something I have not shared with you before, and I've shared a lot. I have a compulsion, and it has cost me dearly. 
I give something away shamelessly for free that ends up being rather hurtful to me sometimes. Now, my daddy warned me that giving it away could cost me. Truly, I meet someone new, and I can almost guarantee you I'll end up giving it to them somehow before we finish coffee. If you get to know me, I'm sure I will give it to you or maybe your children. To my wife's pleasure, I give it to her regularly. Not only am I a recovering alcoholic and a recovering drug abuser, I am, well, here it goes, I am a compulsive forgiver. You're late for a coffee date with me? No worries. You spill grape juice on my white carpet? Oh, I'm always spilling something. Forget about it. You plow into my new car, sending me to months of treatment. Think nothing of it. Insurance will take care of it. True enough, some things are small and do not require worry. I am rather clumsy most of the time, so most of my stuff is already wrecked. And insurance did pay for the damage to my car, but it took three months to get it fixed. And I will never reclaim the missed work that is dear to me. I now face an unsure cognitive future owing to the diagnosis of postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome resulting from the brain injury occurring from the accident. Theoretically, the etymology of the word forgiveness concerns, concerns the harmy or victim unconditionally releasing the harmer, the perpetrator, from blame, guilt, or responsibility. Boy, language can be a female dog in heat, right? So think about that for a minute. Sounds a bit godlike to me, being willing and able to release someone from blame, guilt, and responsibility. Now, the smallest bit of research into forgiveness provides all kinds of evidence that forgiving in virtually all cases is healthy, not just for the forgiven, but also for the forgiver. I say virtually because in cases concerning trauma inflicted on another willfully or even ignorantly, mental health clinicians of any merit at all suggest that automatic forgiveness is not necessarily healthy, but rather premature transcendence, or what John Wellwood calls trying to rise above the raw and messy side of our humanness before we have fully faced and made peace with it. I've come to wonder if this spiritual bypassing method, everything is happening exactly as it should, is a tad reckless for even lower scale offenses. The grape juice on the carpet, the missed appointment, certainly the financial and more, the personal, perhaps invisible costs of a car accident. I know that this might be hard to swallow for Unitarians. So let me overlay the more Judeo of the Judeo-Christian perspective the Christian overlay is usually even more offensive. So in the Jewish faith, there is a holiday. In fact, it's the highest of holidays, Yom Kippur. 24 hours dedicated to physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual atonement. Now, atonement sounds like it might be a synonym for forgiveness, but it is different in some radical ways. Atonement is about right relationship, at one moment, reconciled, balanced. Where forgiveness is about getting off the hook, atonement is about restoring the connection between God and human being to its original state. And it's hard to achieve atonement with God. 
I don't know if an apology suffices for the most holy, but the notion of Jewish atonement is that one commits action to reestablish with God. I don't know if God indeed requires an eye for an eye. Perhaps atonement works rather like restorative justice in the legal system, where restorative reconciliation could be natural consequence based, like literally cleaning up one's own graffiti, or such as paying forward with a good and helpful deed. These acts, these are acts of restoration or righting the wrong. Such acts can restore the harmed party to their previous state, even if not physically identical, symbolically interchangeable. Other forms of restorative justice are more creative. Artwork painstakingly produced by the perpetrator, illustra illustrating that she is conscious of, sorry for, and working to not make the same mistake again. The options are truly limitless. When we say, I forgive you, we are saying whether we know it or not, I'm canceling your debt. We are saying in essence, you owe me nothing. Perhaps I'm sorry, or in today's sloppy vernacular, my bad, essentially makes up for the harm done. Some people can make peace with an apology, how gracious, how transcendent, how unlike me. And here's where I'm going to get a little dicey. I wish it were unlike more of us. When forgiveness comes without effort, it is cheapened of less value. No lesson is learned and a victim is left hanging out to dry. I'm asking us to expect more from each other, to be authentic and say, I have been harmed, maybe only a little, maybe substantially, maybe completely. Regardless, to invite one another to work for right relationship, to atone. Instead of giving away free mercy, give the harmer the opportunity to feel into what he has done to truly feel the cost to the harmee. Not vengeance, but so that the harmer can get a second chance to think twice, to think empathically, socially responsibly, rather than anti-socially. Now, if you don't know already, let me be the first to tell you, I have been the harmer as often as I've been the harmee. It is important in relationships that I feel into my mistakes in an effort not to recommit the mistake. I don't always easily see the hurt that I bring, but when given the opportunity to grasp the emotional cost of my behavior to a loved one, my commitment to better conduct increases automatically. A trusted colleague on what to me, sorry, a trusted colleague once called me out on what to me was an inconsequential statement to him about another person's not so nifty manner toward me. When he invited me to feel the harm, the carelessness of my offhanded remark, I was immediately changed. I began. I became determined to be in right relationship with the other person. And I'm so happy to say, right relationship was restored almost immediately. I know that what I'm proclaiming here, that we not be so frivolous with our forgiveness, goes against the grain of grace. And I do not expect you to agree with me or to practice this kind of radical atonement work in your relationships. But I do want you to know one thing. If you absolutely hated this reflection, I forgive you.
Though you've broken your vow a thousand times. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving. Ours is no caravan of despair. Um, yet again, come. Let us take some time now to set our hearts, minds, bodies, and spirits to our time of community prayer and meditation. Well, perfection is not expected of us. We are a people of aspiration trying to do better. We open to the possibility that without meaning to, we hurt others. Sometimes we blow off that hurt because to feel it, to empathize with it, feels like it would break our own heart. So instead we detach, disconnect from one another, leaving both of us and the other alone and lonely. We seek the most holy today to express gratitude for the possibility of right relationship. We ask this once, twice, a thousand times. Simply our effort makes that possible. We request healing, forgiveness, strength, whatever we need to be whole. I invite those of you on Zoom to record your blessings and burdens in the chat box so that we can hold them as a community together. I also want to offer up, offer up a dear friend, Randy, who is embarking on a healing journey. I offer gratefulness that my little pup, Stevie, does not have cancer <laughs> and he gets to toy with us for a while longer. So hold your gratitudes and your burdens with lightness. Let them be recognized now. We ask the most holy to help us remember we are one community held together through intention, adjustment when needed, and forgiveness that comes from our pledge to do better. So we make our now traditional gesture to ourselves and each other, one hand on our heart, the other extended outward in a silent expression to say, I see you, I hear you. We are here for each other. Amen.
Thank you for coming today. There, if it's your first time, if you want our weekly email, if you want updates from UUFNN, if you need help with Zoom or other support, or if you know anyone who's feeling isolated, uh, please contact Carol Sorensen in, uh, at the office at UUFNN.org. Lily would like to make a short announcement. Hi, um, as I often am up here doing, I'm seeing if anybody can help out one of our refugee families. Um, the mom, who is a brilliant woman uh, and uses her laptop a lot, but has two very young children to look after. Uh, unfortunately, one of the children destroyed her laptop uh, in a kind of fit of rage. So she asked me to find out where she could get it fixed, but that's going to cost several hundred dollars. So if anybody knows anyone that has an old PC, not a Mac, uh, that's no longer necessary to them, um, just let me know. I'm just looking around in various places to try to get her back online. Thanks. Of course, uh, if you've been reading our newsletter, there is uh, uh, a need for diapers. There's also a need always with the Reno Posse for uh, food as well as help. So if uh, you can do any of that, please, uh, please let us know. We do have an, uh, a particular, uh, particular uh, need and that's to move a couple of barrels from one place to another. And we need somebody who has a pickup truck who could help with that task. So if you uh, are able to do that pickup truck, move two barrels, it should take only a few hours. So uh, anyway, see me afterwards or contact Carol at the office one more time. This Wednesday, 1026, from 5.30 to 7.30 in the Star King Room, we are launching our monthly youth night series with a movie night for children between the ages of seven and 11. It's an opportunity for our kids to build community and give parents and guardians a nice break. We will be watching Disney's Coco, playing some games and exploring Dia de Mortos, and how we remember our loved ones who have passed on. A pizza dinner will be provided, so kids bring comfy clothes and be ready to have some fun. If you and your child are interested, please talk to Nathan, and Nathan is here, right down here, and uh, or look at the UUFNN newsletter to RSVP. Also, the winds of autumn are beginning to knock on our doors. As we all know, it's sweater weather. And yay, yay. Next Sunday, 1030, uh, the community of UUFNN will celebrate the coming of fall with uh, UUFNN's fall festival after the Sunday service. Come enjoy games and a trunk or treat in the parking lot. It is sure to be fun for the whole family. So bring your kids, grandkids, great grandkids, and your nieces and nephews, costumes are encouraged. So again, as we close, please stay online to join our informal social coffee hour. You'll see an invitation appear on your screen to enjoy a breakout room with groups of eight to 10 people. If during uh, coffee hour you need help, support, or questions answered, please press the help button in your breakout room. And those of you who are here, uh, just say that meet in the uh, foyer and uh, mix and mingle. Thank you.
and every one of you, spiller, latecomer, accident maker, it doesn't matter. Ours is a caravan of aspiration. Go, create your vow the thousandth time, this time with conviction and the dedication of atonement. Go, yet again, go. No, I mean it, go. <laughs> Thank you. 